want you to go over there and check out things. They're half price. Also, St. Benedict's is taking orders for lasagna for pickup on December 10th. A large pan of lasagna is $22. A half pan is $12. Contact Dan Latier or Jan James. More information will be available in next week's bulletin. Now we ask you to check your cell phone to make sure it's in silent mode. There's a custom in our parish that at the end of the final hymn we all kneel, silently saying three Hail Marys for the next one among us called Home by God. And now we invite you into a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts and minds to enter this time of praise and worship. Yeah. This also completes the Jubilee Year of Mercy proclaimed by Pope Francis. God's mercy is made manifest in Christ, and how he has shown God's all-abiding love to us. It is, a good, it is a good time for us to stop and reflect on the meaning of Christ in our lives and God's tender mercy. Christ is our King. We acclaim this by how we show others the mercy of God. Let us now turn to offer one another a sign of welcome.
our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, may we gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <laughs> Responsorial Psalm is number 84. Let us go rejoicing. Mm -hmm. 
us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him we created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
ask you a couple questions as we begin this morning. I'm sure you've all heard about kings, right? How many of you have heard about kings before? Raise your hand. Okay. Can you tell me what a king does? Raise your hand if you can tell me one thing a king does. Hold on. It, you mean him. Yes. He rules over what? He rules over a large area of land that is his kingdom. Okay, rules over a large area of land that is his kingdom. Okay, very good. What else does a king do? What kinds of things do, do kings do? <coughs> they help people of the kingdom. That's a very important thing, too. What else? They what? He orders people to battle other kingdoms. Okay. Well, yeah, we do see that sometimes. Some kings. Okay. What else? You got your hand up. What else does a king do? Well, They tell a prince or princess what to do. Okay. Yeah. So they order people about. Okay, that's good. Yes. All right, one more thing. They make their kingdom a better place. They make their kingdom a better place. Well, you hope anyway, right? Yeah. They're a good king. There are sometimes bad kings, though, right? Okay, hands down for a second. What, uh, what does a king look like usually? Can you tell me one thing a king wears? <coughs> A robish cape and a crown. Okay, good. What else? He wears a dress like thing. He wears a dress like thing? I don't think you would tell a king you're wearing a dress. I don't think he would like to hear that. Yes. Because, you know, back in Jesus' time, they wore long robes, and there are a lot of people where he was in the Middle East who still wear those kinds of clothes. They're not dresses, they're accepted as things that men wear. So. Okay, so how many of you have seen a movie about a king? Can you name one movie that you can think of that has a king in it? What's one? Jack the Giant Killer? Okay, what else? Stardust. Okay, good. Any of you ever hear of the Lion King? Raise your hand. Yeah, okay. We got a lot of Lion King fans here. Okay, this is a good thing. So. All right, well, hands down for a second. I would like to share, there's a lot of stories about kings, and I know when I was growing up, I heard a lot of stories about kings, such as uh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, and the kings and Robin Hood, and certainly Lion King is a great story too. But this morning I'm going to read one particular story that I don't know if you've ever heard before, but this is a very special king. And in order to read this story, I need to set the stage with some proper storytelling music. So, let's have some music please. Now listen closely to my story. There once was a king from long ago who was very rich and powerful, yet he was very unhappy because he wanted a wife. And without a queen, his huge palace seemed very empty. Well, one day, while riding through the streets of a small village in his kingdom, he saw a peasant girl who was so beautiful and gentle that it took his breath away, and it touched his heart deeply. And the king wondered if he might win her love. Well, first he thought of making a royal decree that would command her to become his bride, and yet he realized that if he forced her to obey him, the king would never be sure that she really loved him. It could be that she would just marry him merely out of obeying his command as the king. Well, next he thought of calling on the woman in person and showering her with diamonds and silver and the finest jewels. And yet he then would be left wondering if she had married him just because he had a lot of money and wealth. Well, then the king considered dressing up as a peasant and meeting her in disguise, but he thought that would be kind of too dishonest, just to merely act like something that he really wasn't. Well, the king knew there was only one way left to win her love finally decided to take off his royal robes, put aside his wealth and power, and actually become one of the peasants like the beautiful girl. And in the end, he won her over through his great sacrifice 
and she became his queen. The end. How about that, huh? And you know, do you know who that king is? He is just like who? Who are we praising right now today? <coughs> Jesus, that is right. And Jesus is our king. And today is a special feast day in which we celebrate Jesus as our king. And we are called to obey our king, aren't we? But he's no ordinary king. For example, did he have a crown of jewels? No. No. What did he have a crown of? <coughs> of thorns. <coughs> and did he have a, a big throne to sit on like kings do? No. Guess where his throne was? On the cross, where somebody nailed him to the cross, and that's where he died. And did he have long, flowing robes usually? No. No. As a matter of fact, when they put him on the cross just before that, they stripped him of all of his clothing. So he was willing to sacrifice all these things, even though he was God and is God, all because he loves all of us so much that he wants us someday to join him in his heavenly kingdom. But the only way to get there is through him and to follow his commands. To love others as he loves us. To help one another as he has helped us. To be kind, to be patient, to be forgiving when people have hurt us. And ask for forgiveness when we've hurt others. And certainly coming to church to learn more about following his ways more closely. And that, my friends, is how we worship the King of Kings was the greatest king in the whole entire universe. And his kingdom lives happily ever after. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, before you go back to your chairs, I have a little something to give you to celebrate Jesus as our king. How many of you like the color? Raise your hand. All right. Not you? Okay. You won't get one. Okay. So, on one side, we have a coloring page with Jesus, our Lord and King, on the cross. And then on the other side is a little word search puzzle where you have to find the words that, some of the words you've heard in the gospel today. So if you can help me pass these out, and can you help me pass those out? And once you get one, quietly walk back with it. <coughs> cues to be with your families again. Okay? And thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Thanks for your responses. Get that out. Thanks. Left, my dear boy. Thank you. Please remain seated as we have a very special presentation at this time. I invite the following children and their parents or guardians to come forward at this time. Bryce Bacchelkamp, Benjamin Henry, Cassius and Emily Hudson. Show 
them our support with a round of applause.
upon all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Church, 